everyone, it's Sherry Carroll here with SimonSaysStamp.com with a card I've created using the Memento Lux inks. I've been wanting to use these and give them a test run on one of my favorite techniques, which is the second generation with water misting. To start off, I've cut a panel of Nina White cardstock, and I have Morocco, Pistachio, and Espresso Truffle Memento Lux inks here. And I'll be starting off by using the shapes and texture stamps by Hero Arts. And there's a couple circle images in here that I'll be using. And this is the set. I'll ink up a fairly solid stamp here with the Morocco ink. And I'll go ahead and just tap this around, make sure that I get it completely covered. And these inks are very luscious and very rich. So I'll go ahead and stamp this down. So once I have that well pressed, I'll go ahead and pop that off. And you can see how that ink completely covers that paper. So the next thing I want to do without cleaning my stamp off is I'm going to go ahead and use my mini mister here and I'm just spraying my stamp with water and you can see the color is just flowing around and I do want to get some of the water to kind of pool around in certain areas. I like to let the water set in with that ink and create a little mixture before I stamp it onto my paper and once I'm ready I'll just go ahead and set this on the paper. I'm not pressing down too hard, but what I do want is it to set into the paper, so I'll let that sit for a second, and then I can go ahead and lift this up. And now you can see where that color has pooled at the top, and I can lift up my panel here and just move that drip around. And once I'm happy with where that's placed, I'll go ahead and grab my heat gun and start giving it some heat and allow it to dry. So I've cleaned off my stamp, and I'm moving on to the pistachio ink. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm inking this up really well, and I'll go ahead and stamp this onto my card. And this will be my first solid image. So I'll go ahead and press this down really good. And once again, once I pull this off, you can see how well that stamps onto the paper, and it's really a nice solid image. So again, I'll get out my towel and my mini mister, and I'll spray this with water, let that pull around a little bit and mix together. And once I'm happy with that, I'll go ahead and gently set this onto my paper. I do want to give you a tip. If you pick up your stamp in a certain area, like to the left, you're going to leave all your color up to the left. So here I've done that, and you can see where it's pulled up to the upper left side, and now I can move that around. And once I'm happy with that placement, then I can go ahead and heat it again with my heat tool. I've used a scrap piece of paper to stamp my green circle so I could get another second generation stamping. And I also use that palette as a test to see how the inks sit on top of each other, how the colors look. So here I'm using the espresso truffle and I'm stamping that little coffee ring, which is quite a bit smaller than a coffee cup, about the same size as the circles that I'm stamping. I won't be doing second generation with this image. I want the colors to remain bold, so I'll be re-inking in between each of my stampings, and I am turning the stamp so that each of the images sit in a different direction. I want to remind you that even though you're stamping without the water, with this ring you will need to heat set it afterwards, otherwise you might run the chance of smudging your work. Now that I have all my spots stamped, I'm going to move in to my lots of dots set from Simon Says Stamp, and I'm just going to add some fill-in color. So here I'm just inking up a small dot with a pistachio color, and I'll go ahead and stamp this in an area where it can be bold. So right there on top of that second generation stamping. And next I will grab a smaller dot, and I'm using just a really tiny acrylic block here for these so I can see where my little dots are going. So I'll go ahead and grab a smaller dot, and this time I'll be using the Morocco ink. So I'll switch these out, ink this up, I'll stamp this a couple times, and I'll stamp that right on top of that green second generation, and it sits really nicely. The color doesn't clash too badly. So that's all my stamping, and as you can see it goes across the panel, and I'll be doing my drop shadow window here in a minute, but first I do want to go ahead and heat set all my inks. So now I have my thanks on a line, and I've cut this from regular white Nina cardstock. This is Simon Says Stamp Die. It's a really fun, whimsical font, and I just love how it's on a line, and you can add it to your cards really easily. So I have cut my panel here in three pieces. So the top piece is one inch, the middle piece is an inch and an eighth, 
and then the last part portion is the remainder of the card. I've also cut a piece of acetate and that's about an inch and three quarters tall. The easiest way I found to assemble this is to go ahead and put the panel pieces onto your card and make sure everything's lined up. And at this point, I'm just going to be adding adhesive under that middle piece, just a little bit on each side. So I have to turn this around and just go ahead and put that onto the card. And now I'm gonna turn the card around and make sure everything's still lined up just perfectly. And once I have that all ready, I'll go ahead and lift up the other side of that middle piece and go ahead and add more adhesive. So now that's all in place. The next thing I want to do is to flip those panels over. So make sure that you don't flip them around, just flip them over. And now I'll add adhesive just to the top of the bottom portion and the bottom of the top portion and line those up. And without shifting them, I'm going to go ahead and lay the piece of acetate down and it will stick just to the backs of those card stocks. And once I have that lined up, I can go ahead and press that down. And now when I flip this over, it matches exactly. So I've trimmed off the side of the acetate where it stuck out and I've also used some foam mount and mounted that top panel up. That middle strip sits underneath everything and my thanks will sit on top of the card like this. I'm using my glue pen here and I'm just adding dots of glue to the tops of the letters so they can stick to the acetate. I like this glue because you can let it dry a little bit and it becomes like a post-it note or a sticky note. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this first before I add the glue to my card. Next I'll draw a line of glue just at the top edge of the panel just underneath that acetate and I'll start off by adding a couple dots first so that I make sure the ends get down really well and so just every now and then again I'll just go ahead and push down on that pen and it releases a little bit more glue so the main idea is just to get a line of glue down. You could also use glossy accents or other glue as long as you can get it in a fine line that won't show from behind your die cut. Next, I'm just using my finger to tap away any of the wet glue. I don't want it to come out from the sides of the die cut once I put it onto the acetate. And once I'm happy with that, I can go ahead and start lining this up and I'll work from the right to the left and I'll just butt that up to the right side and go ahead and press that down in place. And here's another look at my finished card using the Sukuneko Memento Lux inks. Thanks for watching.